Hey everybody and welcome to another live episode of The Grid. My name's Scott Kelby and I'm joined by a beautiful man, a can of ham. <laughs> He's a burning hunk of churning funk. Just back from his trip to Africa. I feel the love. Oh, I feel the love of Mr. Rick Salmon. Hey, Rick. Hey, man. It's so good to see Welcome you here. Welcome back. Hey. This is, you've been on the grid numerous times. Been on numerous times, and I just finished filming. Believe it or not, I was going to ask you to guess my 13th class for you guys today. Really? 13? Yes, number 13. Look at that. Lucky boom, 13. boom. <laughs> well, you, you had one of the biggest classes of all of last year. Really? Yeah, it was uh, building a home studio. Yeah, transforming your home into a studio. And, you know, I said in the introduction, I said, you know, Scott invited me back to do another class, but he told me you got to step it up because that was basic stuff and the people learned a lot. I never said you have to step it up, but I, I said, your class was huge. Will you do another but one? But I stepped it up. So we're, it's a little more advanced, a few more really cool accessories of, you know, some pretty sophisticated techniques that anyone can do in their own home. It was a ton of fun. And I got to awesome. say, your crew was amazing. Your our video crew, is, crew amazing. is amazing. We have an awesome, awesome crew. Gen Thank you. One, everybody. Thanks. They are, we're very proud of them. We love them. All right. Well, welcome to the show, everybody. So we have two topics today. The first topic we're going to talk about, Rick just came back from doing a workshop in um, Africa. Yep. And Rick is not only going to share some photos from there, but he's going to share some photography tips, some bigger picture photography stuff. So we're going to look at that first. And then our overarching topic today is one that we actually tackled a couple of years ago. We're going to retackle it in a different way with different stuff. And that topic is if I had a thousand dollars ish, so right around a thousand dollars to spend on improving my photography, how would I do that? And so Rick and I have some ideas that we hope will help. And you don't have to spend the full thousand, right? No, you don't have to spend the full thousand. You can spend just little amounts of money, you know, in, in, in helping you move down the path. And uh, speaking of that, before we jump in, I do want to tell you. So somebody wrote a great post today. Peter Treadway is my guest blogger, also known as Hybrid Peter because he's with uh, Hybrid Photography over in the UK. Uh, on my guest blog today over at scottkelby.com, he did a whole thing about shooting with the the gear you have, like not thinking yeah, that you yeah, have yeah. to go buy really expensive gear. We're going to be talking about that on the show today. It kind of plays into my whole mm -hmm. $7,000 thing in a big way. But Rick, let's talk about your trip. I want to get some tips. <laughs> well, the, first of all, it, it was amazing. I've been to Africa four or five times. This time we started out in South Africa, went to Botswana, and then came back. So I'd like to share with you some of my favorite pictures, starting with this picture here. And this <laughs> That's is just beautiful. This is, thank you. This is just not going to be a, a slideshow of pretty pictures. I want to give a tip, trick, or technique for each one. So the main thing is this. Every picture we've ever taken, every picture we ever will take has one main element. You know this. It's light. You break it down, and it's highlights and shadows. Right. So we have to learn how to see the light. And basically the elements that comprise light are the contrast, the direction, the color, the quality, the intensity, and the movement of light. So here, I, I still shoot I still shoot digital, Scott, like I used to shoot slides, exposing for the highlights. I don't want the area around the sun there overexposed and washed out. So I have my histogram always activate, I'm sure you do too, and your highlight alert. Uh, this is a made picture. I'll, I'll, I have a little story about how we made this picture. I put a little filter on there. So the first thing, we have to learn how to see the contrast range in the scene. You know, our eyes have this dynamic range of about 13 f-stops, right? Right. Our our eyes don't have that. Our eyes have about 13. Our cameras don't have that. So in a situation like this, look at look at this beautiful animal. This is a, a daylight fill-in flash shot. What I did is I compressed the brightness range. I metered for the background camera on manual. Right. I put my flash on TTL. And then I adjusted the flash to perfectly balance the light from the flash to the available light. And a quick tip, I feel in most situations, if the eyes aren't in focus and well lit, I feel as though you've missed the shot. And when it comes to contrast, I'm always exposing, like I said, for the highlights. If the highlights, let me ask you a question. Yeah. How, if I ex overexpose the highlights around this, uh, this uh, animal's chin there by yeah. three stops, could you personally rescue them? If it's raw image, I might get a half a stop or a yeah, stop. I yeah. would not be able to get three stops. Right. So this is the thing we really have to expose for the highlights and shoot raw. Uh, this is actually, speaking of raw, this, uh, this is a beautiful big cat here is having some spare ribs for breakfast. I, I toned it down a little because it was uh, a little gross. So I'm always, sh <laughs> I'm always shooting Thank with, you for, for <laughs> with my highlight alert uh, activated. In a low contrast situation, we don't have to, you know, I shoot most of my pictures on the AV mode. How about you? 
Um, oh, yeah, 99%. Unless I'm in the studio. Right. That's the only time I'm on manual mode, I'm in AV mode. So we, we're, we're totally in sync with that. This kind of looks like the Santana cover, remember, Braxis? It does. That is. That looks exactly like <laughs> right. the Santana Braxis. Dude, I had that album when it was an album. I know, I had that too. album when it was new. Black Magic oh. Woman, Evil Ways, right? Oh. So anyway, oh. in a low contrast situation like this, still shoot raw, but you don't need you don't need a lot of plus or minus uh, controls. But the key here is see eye to eye and shoot eye to eye. It looks like this animal's looking right at you and oh, right at the audience, right? That's because I got down really low. Hey, Rick, can we go back two frames? Yep. Or I'm sorry, three frames to the to the first one. Yep. You know what makes this so great? I mean, the color is great. And the balance of the objects are great. But when you're doing silhouettes, you know what makes a great silhouette? Easily recognizable things. That's it. I see silhouettes where you look at it and you go, what is that? Right. Like, what is that? And as soon as you see that, saw that picture, you knew not only exactly what it was, you knew exactly where it was. Yeah. It's a very, it, silhouettes are harder to pull off than people think, but that, that's a perfect execution. Well, thank you. And when it comes to a person, you know, if we did a, someone did a silhouette of us here, right, and we're looking this way, and it's a right. silhouette, no one's going to know who we are. If we're looking at each other and the light's behind, people are going to know exactly who we are because we have very recognizable profiles, right? <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> hey, we have some comments real quick, Rick, before sure. we get back into yep. it. Uh, Chandra QB says, went on, on, on the workshop with Rick. It was amazing in all caps. Uh, Fran Hughes says, I love Rick's part one class for transforming a home studio. Great tips. Rick is such a great instructor. Love his classes. Well, that's why Rick's done 13 classes for us. <laughs> yeah. You're right. He is a great instructor and people love, love, love his classes. And look, hybrid Peter. There we go. The guy I was just talking about it a minute ago who did my guest blog today. Uh, he says, best way to start spending $1,000 to improve your photography, a Kelby One membership and Photoshop world tickets. True story. <laughs> so Peter's coming. He's coming uh, to Photoshop. I world. would agree with that. Yeah. I would agree. There's well, so much you. to learn. There is. Thank you very much for even saying that. All right. We're going to back to Rick. Okay. okay so, so a couple more. So a see eye to eye, shoot eye to eye. When, the, when you have front lighting like this, again, you don't have to make too many plus or minus exposure compensation you know, settings if you shoot raw, but you still have to look for the brightest part of the scene and make sure you don't have any blinkies. That's why I always shoot with that highlight alert. Now, I, I, t I leave my highlight alert on all the time. Same here. But I never look at my histogram. I think the, the highlight highlight alert is looking out for the one thing I'm concerned about exposing for right. the highlights, like you said. I, I, they could take the histogram off my camera. It would not affect anything. Well, the highlight alert is, you know, people ask me, they say, Rick, do you use, do you use a light meter? I say yes and no. I say, no, I don't use a handheld meter when, when I'm on safari, but I use the meter that's in my in camera, camera, and that's course, basically yeah. the histogram and the highlight alert. This is kind of a cool shot. Uh, you know, an action shot usually wins out over a portrait. So this is taken early in the morning, but here, again, we have this side lighting. If I'm not exposing for the highlights, dialing down in the AV mode my exposure by about a stop and a half, I would blow out. How the, far are you away? Uh, believe I'll have a behind the scenes shots about from here to about twice as far as the way as the camera is. So, uh, it, we oh, that's pretty close. Yeah, yeah. It was, a lot of times people are shooting it, with 400, 600, you know. No, a lot of th th this was actually taken, well, this was taken too with my 24 to 105. Ooh, that's lens. nice. And you know what? Another very easily, rec instantly recognizable um, silhouette. Yep. We have this beautiful giraffe, and then here's uh, here's another one. But I'm you know I'm interested usually in my own color. You know, uh, if I'm working for if someone's working for National Geographic, they're going to want the true color there. So I added the color here. But let me tell you, if I can, this quick behind the scenes sure. stories. This is the shot I envisioned in my mind's eye, which is what I talk about in my book, Creative Visualization. You have to think about the picture you want if you want to get that shot. So I wanted a picture of the giraffe silhouetted, like you was talking about, with the trees at sunset. So we're driving around. We're on the top of the mountain, and these circles show some of the giraffes in this valley. And I said to our driver, I said, man, I would love to get these giraffes up on the top of the hill at sunset at the perfect time. So he says, don't worry about it. So we go down and very slowly for about an hour, he's just circling around and the giraffes are moving up closer and closer and closer to the top of the hill, right? And they get in exact the position, he's exact right position. You he take says, out a high powered rifle, I like do. a 50 cal. No, oh, I'm sorry, I thought that's where this is going. I'm sorry, my bad. I jump out, he says, Rick, jump out. Again, 24 to 105 millimeter 
millimeter image stabilization lens. I'm really close. So this is the color, but it's not the color I envisioned. So in Nick, Ooh, in the Nick nice. software, I use a gradual. You use the graduated filter. I love the gradual filter. That's a great filter. Now, now, did you use the one that has the bicolor, or did you use the one where you just went to a neutral density? I gradient? like the bicolor. The I like the bicolor, nice, isn't it? But this is just the gradual one. In this it's case, very nice. Yeah, with the bicolor, you could choose whatever color you right. want. That's very nice. So, but you know, this is an okay shot. You're right. The next one's very dramatic. But it's it's and dramatic. I think in people's mind's eye when they think of that Africa shot, they right. think of that sunset. I just saw a question up here uh, from TK Photog asked, Rick, when was the giraffe photo taken, dawn or dusk? So it was dusk. It was a sunset shot, yeah. And they asked because of the awesome mist in the distance. Yes, that's, so it was a little dusty there. It was a little dusty. It was a little dusty. They've All had right. a drought in uh, Africa. Hey, for we, a wanna, while. we want to uh, uh, welcome Matt McConnell. Howdy from Texas. This is hey. my first time watching hey, live. Glad to have you here. And then uh, let's see. MJB Photo 82 says Rick's video is the first video I'd ever watched. Wow. I learned how to take my camera off auto mode through him. There you there go. We go. There you go. And uh, EDG Photography says, Flashing on an animal? I guess they're asking about the flash shot you used earlier on the... Uh... Yes. Yes, we were pretty far away from the animal. Here's a natural light shot. But, you know, I don't think, you know, the animal, you know... I don't know, you know, they looks at lightning, right? Like lightning happens. When I was doing a lot of underwater photography, that's a question I would get all the time. Oh, you're using a flash underwater. Yeah, but you know what, Rick? They never charge lightning. They never. They don't turn they don't and charge, charge lightning. lightning. If yeah. lightning goes off, they just go, ah, it's lightning. Huh. But if you shoot a flash, they may go, I'm going to eat yeah. Rick Salmon. Well, you know, a lot of bird photographers use a flash. They use a better beamer that extends yeah. the range of the right. flash. So. But I could just see how some people might not want uh, people to photograph animals with a, with with a flesh. flesh. Yep. Yeah. Well, you might not want it if it eats you. No, no. No. But if it's like rabbits, I, I always, when I'm doing my rabbit photography, which as you know, I'm very well known for. You are. That's yes, your next book, right? My Miniature Bunnies. Yeah, Miniature Bunnies is my next coffee table book. Uh, I use extensive flash. That's good. I use, you know what I use? I use like a big Pro Photo B1 with a 71 inch softbox. And, I get right in go there. Down in I history. get right in there on the bunny. You're gonna go down. Bunny this big, softbox that big. All right. Well, I'm sorry. Back to your. Okay, story. just one or two more. Anyway, colors. I like warm color. Look how sharp this shot is. And when you're photographing animals, like with the elephant, what I go for again, getting back to that creative visualization, I'm going for photographing at the uh, peak of action. Here, another, one of the lions. Uh, we're talking about color. There's warm color on the left, cool color on the right. We, I could have warmed up the picture on the right, but what I'm just trying to show that people like pictures with uh, warm colors. So we're almost done here. The quality of light. This is nice, soft light. But whatever subject I photograph, I take like the wide angle shot, and then I also go in for the detail Ooh, shot. I so, like that. So we know what this is, right? But yeah. it's kind of like an abstract. So this is taken in hard light. So, you know, the hard light, the stronger pictures, soft light gives a different... I like uh, the treatment on that duo. Uh, on, uh, on the duotone? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. That's a Nick Silver Effects Pro. Very uh, nice. That's a, that, that was a, another one of my uh, lucky shots. And when it comes to the intensity of light, you know, I always shoot, try to shoot at the lowest possible ISO to get the cleanest possible image. But, right. you know, as you know, <laughs> you know, we could shoot now at ISO 4000 and get some really cool uh, shots. Just let me share these. This is my favorite shot from the trip. I think actually mm. I, can, I can't, I think I can't go back to this location because these guys are just so cute. So if you put light and, light and composition together, I think you have a good photograph. Okay, but, wait, how far away were you from? Well, I'm gonna show you right here. Oh, okay. Right here. That's an awesome shot. That is an awesome shot. So here's shot. the original shot. I'm shooting with the Canon 5DS, the 100 Ooh, to 400 look how millimeter. Much better it looks warm. Well, you also. It up. And also cropped in, right? Way I mean, cropped in. I saw this moment, I, and I said, I just have to shoot. I can't wait to zoom in more. Of course, right. So I was able to do that. And look at the detail. And this is the beauty of this camera, where you could zoom in and get the detail. And Jay Maisel, what's the main thing he talks about all the time at Photoshop World? Gesture. Yeah, light right? color and I don't know if it's gesture. the main thing. <laughs> and light color and gesture are his yeah. three. So look at the gesture of this little cub in oh, the back. Oh, it's wonderful. And the way he's looking at you. And I mean, that's... That's a that's a, one of those pictures you enter in a competition. Well, it's a, it's my best dumb luck shot ever. It's not a dumb luck <laughs> shot. It's a great shot. You're well, very well done. So it was a great experience. And I know Chandra, who was on the trip, uh, was watching. She worked really hard. And no matter what type of photography people do, you know, the harder you work, 
the luckier you, you get. get you right? bet. <laughs> a couple comments here. Martin from Germany. Hey, thanks, Martin. Martin says, Scott's new class on the Nick collection is great. Check it out. Thank you, Martin. And Gare? Gareth? That's a hard one. I'm going with, it's probably Gareth, G-R, right? Gareth. All right, so I'm going to go with Gareth because I think it is. Rick, have you ever shot the Wildebeest Crossing? It's on my bucket list to do it sometime. Uh, it would take me a little while to find it, but probably not that long. If you just give me one second. You did it, huh? I, I have it. Yeah, we did this. This was amazing. This was, like, totally amazing. There's a shot. We did this with the Jonathan Scott, the big cat man. Wildebeest. Uh, but uh, look at this. And you know what's cool about this? In composition, landscape composition, what did Ansel Adams like? That S curve, right? Look at the S curve of the wildebeest. Oh, yeah, it's perfect. I mean, and this is taken also with the 24 to 105. And what was really cool, Scott. I is thought he liked it because S was my first initial. These guys were going away from us. Then they changed because what they do is they, the migration is they Would follow. Would you fire a flash? Uh, <laughs> they, all, they all came cruising at you. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, this is, this is a hard shot to get because mostly the wildebeest are running away from you. So this is, uh, you know, getting back to setting the goal. But it was a great, uh, it was a great, great trip. And Packer says, Rick, uh, Rick, this is getting me excited oh. about your presentation at the Memphis Camera Club yeah. in May. Yeah, me too. I love, uh, I love going to the camera clubs. Memphis That's going to be Cameron fun. Club. We're also going to the Memphis Zoo. To shoot. Are you? Yeah. You're so Memphis. All right. Hey, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we are going to talk about a book we're going to give away. We're giving away one of Rick's book, a signed copy of Rick's book today on the show. Uh, we've got our topic, which is if I had a thousand ish to spend on improving my photography. We're going to talk about that. Of course, we want your ideas and your comments as well. And we will be right back. Don't go away. We're live with Rick Salmon here on The Grid. On The Grid with Rick Salmon. Hey guys, I'm Adam Amakias, and I am a music photographer. The photography industry is constantly changing. So I'm gonna teach you about social media, marketing, branding, and all the tools you need to be an artist today. So come check out my brand new class, only on KelbyOne.com. Hi, I'm Larry Becker and I have a brand new class on Kelby One and it's all about saving my friend photographers all kinds of money. It's a way to look at gear differently. If there's a certain piece of gear like a reflector, maybe there's a less expensive way to get a hold of that. I talk about V-flats, I talk about making your own gear, I talk about lightweight and travel gear, keeping your gear safe. No matter what it is in photography, if it's about saving money, you'll learn it in this class and it's exclusively on KelbyOne.com. Hey, we're back live with uh, Rick Salmon, and uh, we we were just looking for those of you who are just joining us, just looking at Rick's uh, shots from his. He just got back from Africa a week ago. Hey, a couple things. We're going to give away Rick's book today. It's already signed, but we'll put it. <laughs> we'll personalize it right here. Creative visualization. Great book, by the way. I have this book. Well, thank you. It's, it's lovely, lovely pictures, but all, honestly, a really great book all the way around. So we're going to be giving away a signed copy of this today, signed by the author Rick Salmon, who happens to be here, which is why it's called Rick Salmon's <laughs> Creative Visualization for Photographers. It would be dumb if it was just called somebody else's thing and then he, Rick stuck his name on it. We have that for you here. A couple of other things. So tomorrow, Thursday, is new class day every week at Kelby One, every Thursday. Tomorrow we have a really, really a good class you're going to love. It is from Larry Becker. Now, Larry is famous. Now, Larry was our guest a couple weeks ago on the show. Two weeks ago, I think. Larry was the guest. Larry is an expert at do-it-yourself stuff. He One, is yeah. the man at that stuff. Even though... Rick wants to lay claim to one of Larry's cool tips. <laughs> he was like, I use we, we, we share everything. <laughs> who, who had that first? I don't know. But anyway, Larry's uh, class comes out on do it yourself stuff tomorrow. I'm going to get you the exact name of the class because I was just looking at it a minute ago. Okay. Inexpensive and do it yourself photography gear solutions with Larry Becker. So that uh, is, uh, goes live tomorrow. So that is kind of fun, and uh, go see that because Larry's so good. Well, you know, you said fun, and I think one of the th you're making this fun, right? And I think if you make learning fun, 
that just makes the learning just a much better experience. So I, I really do want to compliment all you guys because it you know, kind of like starts at the top, right? But you're all your classes, kind. they're fun. And if, if you're not having fun, the audience That's isn't, it. And isn't if, you, if you're fun. excited and you're passionate That's about right. what you're teaching and you're enjoying it, it's infectious. Right. And I always think if you're having fun, honestly think that That's if right. you're having fun, that it opens your mind to being more creative and taking more stuff in. Oh, yeah. Because like creative people, they kind of... You, we need to be inspired. Oh, yeah. We need to be. It doesn't happen automatically. That's why you hear artists getting in ruts. Sometimes you need this kind of, you know. Uh, and I think that the humor literally yeah, opens yeah. your mind to the learning and keeps you engaged yeah. and keeps you. I, I think it's a big, a big, a bigger thing than we think. Uh, Photo Camel says Rick is so cool and real. He's always been that way. And <laughs> Totally agree. Photo Camel, you have to send me your real name. This is, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and Gareth says, really stunning images. So, hey, so uh, uh, I, before we get to our topic, which is coming up in just a second, uh, I do want to mention, uh, Rick show, was showing me this right before we went on the air. And it is, so he shoots selfie videos. Yep. Right, and you, you basically, you use this camera just for the video? I use it for just for the video. I take some stills with it too, and I have it on the stick here, and I walk around, and what's amazing- It's as, a stick as an accessory? Yeah, it's actually from the, uh, the, uh, the my podcasts are recorded, the Zoom H4n, it comes with that, but it fits right on here. So I walk around, and I keep it kind of steady. And that's the flip-up screen, And this right? is the flip-up screen, so you can see what you're doing, but what's amazing, as you'll hear, is the sound quality. And how still it is. And how Rick still it is. Rick was showing me this before we went on the air, and I'm watching this thing, and I'm like, it looks like there's a cameraman holding it. It does, right? and uh, on, with a steady cam. With a steady cam, it's right. actually. So we're going to run a little video just so you can see the hear the audio quality, which you, you say is really good. Yep. And the and the video quality. So this is from Rick's YouTube page. Okay, so Rick's we're going to go page. here. Get a sweet. So we can't hear it, but they can hear it, right? Right, they can hear it. India. This. Was it an incredible? Oh, it's freezing. It's freezing because it's running here. Don't okay. Run it full, just yeah, just. We're not going to run it full screen. We'll just run it okay, there. Okay. So uh, yeah, just hit play and see if maybe this it's a screen thing. Uh, so, hey, let me just go, go out of here. Oh, it was freezing there, wasn't it? It was freezing. Uh, let me go back. Aha! So there goes the internet. Wait, no. Here we go, guys. Hang in. Uh, learn online. All my Kelby training, by the way, classes are there. So this is down the bottom. This is my YouTube channel. And let's go to Here Comes the Sun. And let's see. Hey, Rick go. Salmon here. I'm at one of the it's, uh, it's a little stuttering there a little bit. Yeah. I think the inter we can't do it with the internet uh, connection. Right after the sunrise. And Which man, oh man. Was it's it your Wi Fi connection. I'm on Kelby One. Oh, you should be, that should be rocking. Yeah. Well, anyway, they could go on my site and see. People or we could go outside when we're going to the City Fish tonight and make a video. Yeah, we, we are concerned. So, so, you know, I talked to Rick quite a bit. Rick and I talked back and forth during the year just on various topics and stuff. And, and Rick will send me, like, here's a really cool guitar player. Like, Rick sends, yeah. Rick's a, a musician, a very, very, very accomplished musician. Rick's always like, let's jam. I'm like, dude, you're too good for me. I'm not jamming with you. <laughs> but anyway... Um, Rick's it's favorite restaurant is called City Fish, and it's it's here in the Tampa Bay area. And and every time we talk, at some point, City Fish comes up, and Rick's like, "Are we are we going to get to City Fish?" Yes, Rick, we're getting to City Fish tonight. But we learned something very sad about City Fish this week. Yeah, they changed their menu. They did, and they took off some of our favorite stuff. But the fish is still good. And it's called City Fish. You know, the what, city's we, not that good. The fish is excellent. You know, I'm going to make a movie tonight, and we'll I'll post it on my channel. Okay. Our review from City Fish. We'll be there tonight if you happen to be eating a City Fish. Okay, uh, question to Rick. Yeah. Johan asks, welcome back, Johan. We were mean to Johan a couple weeks ago, and so we're, we're being super nice to Johan now. Uh, question to Rick. Did you ever meet an animal that was just impossible to photograph? Uh, I don't think I met one that it was impossible to photograph. It might have been impossible to get a good photograph of it. But it's still a great memory. And, you know, that that's the idea. You know, if it's not going to be the great photograph, you know, take it. And you know, look at the amazing things we can do in Photoshop and Lightroom and with plugins. So, you know, take it anyway, even though it's not the great shot. But on that, yeah. on that, I'm a very – people on, the, on this workshop in Botswana were actually saying to me, Rick, how come you're not shooting so much? 
I don't shoot a lot. Some people in my vehicle, you've heard of the machine gun, right? The machine gun where it yep. just sounds like a machine gun. I have a new one. And I never heard this. It's, <laughs> it sounded like Morse code behind me. It was da 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 It was like Morse code. And I say, if you envision the end result, if you think about what you're doing, you're going to shoot fewer pictures and get a higher percentage of keepers. Right? You just can't spray and pray all over the place, right? That's what I do at football. <laughs> well, all right. Well, it's different, though. Okay. Well, that is different. So Fran Hughes wants to know what happened to my arm. Okay. Yep. So a lot of you know that I shoot bunnies. This particular bunny that I was trying to shoot was up on these rocks, and I had to do a free climb to get up there because it was probably 80... 75, 80 feet. Well, I'm hanging on this one rock because the bunny's just maybe eight or 10. Okay, it's not that. So um, it's like carpal tunnel. Mm. So uh, I, mean, I was just finishing up a book and I'd really been like for two weeks just heads down on it. And uh, I think that I just took it a little too far. First, it started with like a pain at the base of my thumb. Then it started like throbbing. And then I got the brace and that went away. But now my thumb is kind of numb. So fingers are fine. Thumb is kind of numb. But uh, it's, it's getting better. It's getting better every day. Can you still do bar chords? Uh, I have not played guitar since I got this on here. Oh, no. I could do a bar because this is okay. in the back and this would come around. Okay, after this, we'll go to your office where you have all your good covers. Uh, we'll, we'll open out. tune. We'll just do open tune, right, to E or right. D, and then you could do a slide. <laughs> I have a slide at my house, but I'm not very good at slide. Uh, let's see. So Martin would love uh, to print pictures by myself. Any printer recommendations for around 1500 That's $500 over. Yeah. Uh, let's see. John Mowry from Texas. Do hey. you feel a variable aperture? I, we're already on. So now, okay. now we're on, apparently, to the new topic. Okay, okay. The new topic is, you know, if we only had 1000 bucks to spend, how would we spend it to, to further? our photography uh let's see so john mowry says do you feel a, a variable aperture zoom lens so like a 100 to 400 mm -hmm. or maybe 100 to 600 is adequate for everyday use on an african safari rick why wouldn't it be well there was a person on the workshop he uh he just bought a used 400 canon 400 millimeter 28 lens big heavy fixed but you're locked in, and, and you can't get out of the vehicle all the time. Right. So I, all those pictures that you saw that were taken with a, a zoom lens were it's the new, and you know, you know how sharp that is, the new Canon 100 to 400 Oh, millimeter. that's a variable. That's a... That's a, it's four, five, five, four, six. Four, five to five, five six. six, yeah. Yeah, and the 200 to 400 is... Uh, is it five, six or 6.3? You know, I'm not sure. I'm not that technical. It's a variable. It's a variable. <laughs> it's variable. Right. So for those of you who aren't familiar with what a variable aperture zoom lens means, it means when you're zoomed out as far as you could go. So with a 100 to 400, when you're at 100, your lowest possible numbered aperture would be uh, f3.5. As you zoom like 100 to 200, without you touching your f-stop, your f-stop keeps going up. 4.5, 5.6, up to right. probably 6.3 when you get to 400. Uh, but here's the thing, is if you take a 400 and you zoom in on an animal, even if you're at 5.6 or 6.3, the background will still be out of focus. Yeah. If you zoom in tight, now that's in tight. Um, now, it, uh, there are some, it, when, I don't want someone to go, well, what if the thing's 500 yards right, away? Right. You're not going to get the background out of focus. They're of course. within reason. But if it's reasonably close and you zoom in tight, even with 5.6, it, but I, I'll tell you what. Working out of a car, I think you'd much prefer a 100 to 400 than you would to have a big 400 f 2.8. Now, ideally, you'd have a 600 f yeah, f4, yeah. right? 600 f4, or like Canon makes a 200 to 400 with a 1.4 tele extender. That's in an it. amazing lens. It is an amazing lens. It's expensive, and but it's not as big as a 400. Yeah. So it's it it had, but I, I, yes, to, I I would think it's awesome for that. And Rick, you agree? Yeah, well, you know, took those shots. With well, it. I took the shots with it, and, and some of the other shots. So all my Africa pictures, I, I did bring a fixed lens once, but I would I would say I would never bring a fixed lens again. <laughs> Photo Camel says Scott hurt his wrist because he forgot to reset his camera, shot a wedding at ISO 3200 at f16, and <laughs> smacked himself in the, the forehead. forehead when viewing in post. Do you know that I did something like that? I, did, I didn't smack myself in the forehead, but I did something like that. I went to Monument Valley. Yep. 
and the night before we went to this place that has swinging steaks. Have mm -hmm. you ever heard of that place? No. It's like the only steakhouse near Monument Valley, and it's not worth a darn. But it does have its its thing is there is a swing, and they put steaks on it, and it Ooh, swings back and forth over a fire. It's supposed to make the food good. It doesn't make it. It was the worst steak I had of the entire <laughs> year. And I'm pretty I'm pretty like easy when it well. gets to steaks. It was really really bad. I mean, all of us there were three of us eating, and we were all like. This is an unbelievably bad steak. And we had to wait like an hour and a half. While we were waiting, there was a band. I switched my camera to 1600 ISO. Yeah. Uh, I got up at dawn at Monument Valley. 1600. Six shot most of the morning at 1600 on a tripod at 1600 ISO. Okay. So let's talk about the stuff we would get if you had $1,000, okay, yeah. that you could spend. Or in Johan's case... Uh, since he, we'll call him Euros, okay, because he's Dutch. Right. And so, all right. So um, let's do this. I, I can tell you something I would do. And, and I, I know that you want to hear me recommend gear for you to buy. I'm going to recommend something else. And this would be for if you are a landscape photographer or if you are a travel photographer or even if you are a fashion photographer is instead of buying some gear, invest in yourself. For example, if you're a landscape photographer, you need to go where great landscape photos are made. If you live here in the United States, uh, you can easily go to Phoenix, Arizona, get a rental car, and drive to, what do they call it, the Golden Triangle? Uh, is it? The Golden the Four Horse? Corners? Yeah, where the, yeah, is it the Four Corners? Some of the most amazing places to shoot on the entire planet are, are four hours from, from Phoenix, Arizona. But for a lot of Americans who have been there, right, I would like to go. I've been there. I've shot there numerous times in Utah and in Arizona. And all. I would like to go to Europe again. So here's what I recommend wherever you live. Well, I don't know if this app is available in, the, in, the, in Europe. I imagine it is. I want to tell you about an app. It's called HitList, H-I-T-L-I-S-T. It's a free app. And here's what I love about HitList. You go into HitList and you, you make an account mm -hmm. and you say, these are the places I would love to go. Only let me know when you've got a killer deal. So you'd go in there and I would put in like Paris, London, uh, Portugal, you know, Morocco, any place you want, or San Francisco, New York, Chicago, wherever you want to shoot. Kathy's checking it out right now. <laughs> yeah, Kathy. Kathy, our whole, our whole studio audience, if I can say this, our entire studio audience is downloading the app as we right. speak. So you load in the cities you want to go to. And it, it what's amazing about it was is it, it doesn't, it doesn't bug you. It's just all of a sudden, two, three weeks later, you get a thing that goes, bing, deal to Paris, two weeks from now, $616. And you're like, wow, that's cool. round trip airfare from your city. <clears throat> so you get to put where you are, and it's waiting for a deal. You know, Now, you may have to connect through another city. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to connect through Atlanta or, like, you know, wherever. Yeah. And sometimes you're on an airline that you normally would not fly. Like, you fly airlines, you're like, is that really an airline? Right. <laughs> Bob's airline, is that really? But I'm telling you what. Now, you can go to Kayak, and right now, here's the thing. Here's the trick about if you're an American and you want to fly to Europe and go do mm -hmm. travel photography, is if you're flexible on your dates, like, you can go, well, I can kind of go whenever, you can get deals right now in the next couple of months. Uh, for example, uh, I just saw one. Now, this is from Boston to Reykjavik, uh, $268 round trip. Wow. You can go to, from uh, Boston to, where is this, Portugal? To Portugal, $290. Uh, you can go on Norwegian Airlines to Oslo. Oslo, Norway, right? That's for cool. 380. For 491 on United, you can go from Boston to Dublin. So I'm using Boston like I don't know why, but it's just that's the one that came up. But if you're oh oh I see why, because Boston Logan was chosen as the where you want to leave from. But if you're willing to be like kind of flexible with your travel, either internationally or and just say, I'd like to go sometime mm -hmm. in the next couple of months, and it'll say, that's These dates, tip. here's a good time to go. I would definitely invest in that. Now, if you're going to do landscape or you're going to do something like that, uh, I don't know what equipment you have, but I can tell you what's actually a pretty good investment. And the only way for you to really appreciate what I'm about to tell you is to have bought the cheap version. 
don't buy a cheap tripod. Buy a quality tripod. Number one, you'll have a quality tripod for eight years, 10 years. I have a, 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 a I would not sure I would spend this much money now, but I bought a Gitzo Mountaineer tripod. Mm -hmm. I think I got it in 2005. Wow. 2005 or 2006. It was like my first time I bought a real tripod, and I thought, I'm just going to spend a ridiculous amount. It was like $750, like a ridiculous I amount. I tell you where to go. There's a company, and they're based in the UK, called Three Legged Thing. The number three oh, yeah. legged thing. And I'm using theirs now. And I found one of their travel tripods is good enough to use every day. It's, it is a travel tripod. It is lightweight. It does fold up really small. And it weighs next to nothing. But sometimes when you get those travel tripods, Rick. I know. They're like. They're on the verge of falling over all the time. Well, they blow in the wind, right? They right. vibrate. Go look at the three-legged thing. Their prices are about half of what, what you might think. They're really clever. Do you know that every one of theirs, like you can screw a leg off yeah. and make it a monopod? Well, that's cool. They have a, it's designed that way. I could use way. that for my camera next time. Yeah, you could. Big that. giant. You could, <laughs> but then you could take it up high. That's right. Right, with a fish or a real mm -hmm. wide one. Anyway, but those are a couple. I have some more things, but that's a couple of things. Uh, we got a lot of questions coming in. Uh, Brent Connell asked, any word if my shoot like a pro tour is coming to Canada? It may come to Toronto. I hope it does. But can I tell you something? Canada makes it nearly impossible. I'm like on a Canada watch list. The, I, last year, I almost didn't get on stage in Toronto. They detained me. Even though I was there legally, even though I showed them in their really? rule book, look, I'm here. Yeah, they were horrible to me. Um, let's see. So uh, M MJB Photo says, if I had a thousand to spend, I would buy more modifiers for my B1. So can I tell you something, MJB Photos? If you bought a B1, you have more money to spend. <laughs> <laughs> you bought a pro photo light, you got money. All right, Martin from Germany. So how about a printer for $1,000? You know, the Canon Pixma Pro 1, how yeah, much yeah. is that? I don't know how much, I but, think it's but under they've 1, come down in price. And, I'm going to think and, I can and get they're, one for They're it. amazing. But while you're looking that up, following up, I think a, a sturdy tripod is important. But equally as important, I think, is a ball head. Right, because I see oh. people come with the ball heads and they're flimsy and whatever. So you need a good tripod and ball head combination. I use the really right stuff. Again, I've had that for yeah, five but, years. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I'm, I'm telling you right thousand. now. I know, over a thousand. Okay, the really right stuff ball heads are absolutely the best ball heads ever made. I've never seen or used another ball head that comes close. They're the most expensive yeah. ball heads. I mean, you're buying yeah, yeah. the... The Mercedes of it is. They have a smaller one that might the be. The BH40 under is 395 bucks. Yeah. So I used to have the BH55, and that's I bought them at the same time. By the way, I bought my tripod and my BH55. It was a thousand something for my like. I, it was I was drinking at the time. Anyway, <laughs> so so then I went down to a BH40. Honestly, for most of us, the BH40 yeah. is fine. And it's, it's under 400 dollars, but. You can get a deal with the with the three leg thing. Yeah, yeah. They make their own they make oh, their own cool. ball heads, and they're very inexpensive, and they're actually really really good. You know who else makes a nice ball head? Jados. Don't know them. They're another company that makes ball heads. They make pretty good ones. I've used the Jados. You know what I use the Jados for? No. Nope. Uh, when I do remote cameras. Oh, that's because cool. the BH40 is kind of big for doing like remotes. <clears throat> it's actually pretty good. Uh, let's see. Martin from Germany. I'm going to Ireland this summer for the third time. Great landscapes. You know, Martin, I, number one, the Irish people, they are the... You ever been to Ireland? No, but uh, I'm talking to Kathy about it, actually. I'm, doing telling, trip there. I'm telling you what, the Irish people are the most warm. I mean, I think of, of the places I've been, I can say, well, who are the warmest people? Indian people. Mm -hmm. When you go to India, oh, the yeah. Indian people are the most gracious to guests you've ever seen. Look, in Kenya and Botswana, these people were so nice, too. Like in some of the villages we went to, it was just amazing. So, yeah. And Ireland. Ireland. You're going to have a wonderful time. Now, I've only been to a small part of Ireland. I want to go up no up to northern, the northern part yeah. and to some of the... There's a lot of places I haven't been to. Uh, let's see. Johan says, if I would... Oh, hey, speaking of that, I just looked it up. Um, who, I think it was... Was it Johan that asked about the $1,000? It's, it's the Canon Pixma Pro 1, and it, it's right around $1,000 U.S. That is an outstanding printer. 
That printer is crazy, crazy good. All right, just an F. I've never been to Photoshop World. Could you get there for less than a thousand room, food, airfare, pass? Justin, where do you live? So, <laughs> so here's the thing. You can get your pass. If you're a Kelby One member, I think you can go now for $599. That leaves you $400 bucks for your room. So we have a discount at the, at the Mandalay Bay. But if you can't afford the Mandalay Bay, you can stay at a hotel attached to the Mandalay Bay. It's the Luxor. It looks nice from the outside. <laughs> it does look nice from the outside. The rooms aren't awesome, but they're dirt cheap. But they're they're not awesome. But you know what you could do also? You could stay at the I stay at the Embassy Suite sometimes behind the Hard Rock Hotel, and they have a shuttle that brings you to the strip. So yeah. I think you, I think you could do it for. I think the Embassy Suites might be better yeah. than the Luxor. <laughs> yeah. So you you could get your pass now if you're a Kelby One member. You you can you can do this. Uh, if you're not a Kelly Boy member, it'll cost you a hundred bucks more. But you can do. I'm, you can pretty sure if you look around, you can do the airfare. You can do the room. You can eat very cheap in Vegas. Uh, and yeah, I think you can do it. It'll be around a thousand bucks. But I think yeah, you could absolutely do it. All right. Um, so look at this. Uh, John Mowry uh, yeah. says some of the most followed Instagrammers are shooting with mid-range, entry-level cameras and with kit lenses. Not only that, John. Yeah. Some of the most followed Instagrammers are shooting with nothing but a phone. Nothing but an iPhone. So keep that in mind. All right, Fran Hughes. Regarding Photoshop World, I will be there in two in 2017, and I have everything crossed that Glenn, Dave, Matt K, and Serge will be there. That's this year, Fran. All of those people. <laughs> Glenn is going to be there. Dave's there. Matt Glaskowski, Serge Ramilly, Uh, They will all be there. Fran, you got to go. Yeah, yeah. You just got to go. You've just got to go. All right. John Mary says, really right stuff is the way to go. Yeah. A new pocket pod is an absolute lifesaver when you oh. can't take a real pod. I have a pocket pod, too. I used a, a, a pocket pod as a remote. All right. Give me a give me a under $1,000. Uh, can we get my screen up here? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I'm in Kenya. If I, if you, you know, the answer is, you know. Are you on? Um, oh, yeah. That's. Uh, it's not coming. I That's, think it went off because we're, we're seeing it on my screen. We need to um, just go to the Wi-Fi. This one? No. Yeah, you're good. It's the next thing over. It's, oh, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, are you on video control room two? No, you're on the good Wi-Fi. Oh, oh this right one, there. this one. Uh, oh, you're in video control one. Should I be one or two? Ah, uh, go to one. Go to one. But you might have screen sharing off. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, <clears throat> when people ask me, you know, what should I get for under a uh, thousand bucks? The answer is, actually, no matter what question someone sends in or you ask me, the answer is always the same. It depends. Drugs. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it depends. It depends on what you do. So I think if you're into people photography, you know, I tell people, I joke around, I say my specialty is not specializing, but I think you know, and Kathy saw this in the class we just shot, I love photographing people. You do. So if you love photographing people, I'd say don't leave home without uh, at least a three-in-one reflector diffuser kit to compress the light, the, that brightness range in, in the scene, to soften those shadows, to bounce some light. I think a reflector diffuser kit is a, is a, an essential accessory and that's you can get that for about 150 bucks wait you don't have to spend 150 bucks you for a three-in-one kit you can get a westcott five-in-one kit watch i'm going to show you okay five you in use one? fj west i know they have a five i know they one. have a six in one all right let's try their six but in then one. what else we can do there is we could bounce our flash like we were doing in the studio or actually in jen's house today uh we could bounce that flash into the reflector and take in the uh 89 bucks. 89 bucks. 89 bucks. Go. I think you can get it actually cheaper than that. But okay. 89 so, so bucks. So anyway, that would be B &H my recommendation photo. for people photography. Try to control the light and shape the light. Okay, so I was going to say the exact same thing, but without the five-in-one part. I was going to say go to Westcott, mm -hmm. get a, a one-stop diffuser. I think for shooting people, I think you're going to use the reflector this much, and you're going to use the diffuser a ton. Yeah. I think if you want better people shots outdoors, now this is strictly for yeah. outdoors, the best $20 you can spend for portrait photography, period, is a one-stop diffuser. It's 20 bucks if you just want the diffuser. So what Rick's talking about, and, and it is actually a good deal, for 86 bucks, That's pretty cheap. You, you get a full diffuser. And, well, I mean, you get a six-in-one. What that means is you have a reflector that is gold. That's for outdoors. Yep. You have a reflector that's silver. Don't use that outdoors. <laughs> You've got a reflector that's white. 
You have a reflector that's black. You have the diffuser inside. And apparently there's another color. I can't <laughs> imagine what it is. Oh, I bet it's the platinum. Maybe there's like, like a, sunlight, maybe? Yeah, there's like one that's kind of, they, they make this other one that is like also useful outside. So that's actually a pretty good thing because, um, because you're getting basically the whole package. However, if you don't want to spend the 90 bucks, 86, 90, call it 90 bucks. If you want to spend $20, go get a one-stop diffuser. That is the, and you're just going to put it, it's the easiest thing in the world to use yep. because using a reflector actually takes some skill. People do entire classes on using a reflector. Here's what you do with the diffuser. You put it between the sun and your subject. That's it. If you can get it close to them, it actually makes the, their skin glow yeah. a little. It, it's, it's better. If you can get, not in the frame, of course, but just out. That's all you need to know about a diffuser. Now, diffusers come in every possible size. You can buy big scrims that'll do wedding. You can yep, buy yeah, all kinds shots. of huge ones. But I usually get one. Now, this one is a pretty big one. That's a Westcott 30 inch. That's the 30 inch. 30 inch is pretty good. They also make a 42 inch. That's 99 bucks for the 42. Oh, here's a really cool one. Go, go in your search here. Do Rick. Yeah. Don't buy the $86 one. Spend the 99 and get the 42. Try this one Rick Salmon Light Diffuser and Tote. So this is my Westcott kit that I have. It's like a three-in-one light diffuser and tote. Light? I think it's light. I think that's what it's diffuser. called. And tote. Uh, I think you have to write is it this one, the Rick Salmon on location light that's control it, that's kit? That's it. I don't even remember the name of it. How much is this thing? No longer available. No longer available. This, it was so popular. But this came with a little, a little diffuser that came over the, uh, the, that went over All the right. flash. Let's too. have awkward silence for a moment. Ready? Go. There we go. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. So find a diffuser. Yeah, find <laughs> it's a diffuser. twenty bucks. I don't even know this. So I'm gonna have to, we're gonna have to call up Kelly. Right? We have to call Kelly. We Kelly, love Kelly. Man, anyway. All right. Uh, Ickle Dot over from the UK says anyone using that o Adobe portfolio thing? I'm finding Adobe Adobe Mobile really useful. By the way, so are we. I use a bunch of man. The Adobe Mobile stuff gets better like almost daily. Uh, yeah. Lightroom Mobile is just awesome. Uh, let's see. Hold on. So okay, Johan wanna... says, if I own $1,000 or euros in my case, uh, I would spend it on going to a workshop or doing or doing a year with Frank Dorhoff. He's a great <laughs> teacher and keeps me around. Frank is an awesome teacher. I love Frank. You've been to his studio. I've been I to have. his studio. Yeah. He makes he makes it fun. He's he super does. knowledgeable. But I think that's so important, taking a workshop, because it forces you. It forces you to do things like get up like in Botswana and South Africa for it does. two weeks every morning to do the sunrise. Can, can I tell a true story about that? Sure. So I'm doing, I'm at teaching at the Santa Fe workshops and I, I did one-on-one -on -one portfolio reviews with all my students that took the workshop. So 12, 14 students, something like that. So woman comes, brings me her portfolio. We open it up and I take a look and I open the first shot. I'm like, this is gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Turn the next page. <gasps> this is beautiful. Turn the next page. This is incredible. Turn the next page. Oh my God, what happened? What happened? What what happened? I'm like, I told her, I go, what happened? She goes, well, the first three I shot at a workshop and the, oh. fourth, the fourth one was on my own. Can I tell you what the difference was? They made her get up at yeah. dawn and shoot in Caught beautiful light. light. And on the fourth one, she didn't want to get up at dawn. She did it on her own time and it looked like a, a different photographer yeah. had taken it. You got to realize at the workshop, they don't press the button for you. Right. At the workshop, they, they make you get up at dawn. They make you shoot at the right time of day. They don't take the picture for you. She was capable of taking fantastic photos when she was willing to do what they make you do at a workshop, which is get up and get on location and be ready to shoot a half an hour before. Well, well they're also set up for you on a lot of workshops. I can't go on my, my screen here, but you saw the pictures here of the horses running in Provence, right? We have like 10 horses running right at us through the water. The background's Isn't great. Isn't right now the time to be in Provence? Uh, this is a great time to be in Provence. Because of the, uh, because, the, because lavender, of the, fields. the lavender fields? The lavender fields, You know, exactly. I've always wanted to go. You should. Well, I tried to go last I year I think Calibra go. wants to, I think she's going to try to talk you into coming on one of my workshops there. But anyway, I would love to. for five days in a row, Scott, every morning we had the horses running towards us through the water in the great light. So everyone got the shot. You right. go there by yourself to Provence, uh, you're not <laughs> No horses see. are running. No horses you know are why? running. Here, do you know how Rick triggers the horses to start running? He fires a flash. I do. They turn and run. And they run right towards us. It's true. 
It's absolutely. All right. Some other things that we can do, you know, the, the, uh, Johan mentioned earlier, uh, Frank Durhoff's class. I, I cannot tell you how much I've learned at workshops over the years. Even when I'm a guest instructor at mm -hmm. somebody else's oh, yeah. workshop, I always learn a, just a ton of stuff. And I think that, that any time that you invest in it, any time that I've invested, so I've gone to food photography workshops. Mm -hmm. I've gone to uh, lighting, like portrait lighting. Uh, I went uh, to a workshop in Detroit years ago with Mary Dupree. And, and like the first day I was there, I learned something that I use to this very, very day. Ooh, okay. Hey, Noel just wrote uh, B and H has a 48 inch diffuser right now for a 48 inch one. That's a good size. That is good. 7350 right now. That's 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 a good one. 7350. So anyway, um, but every time I go to a workshop, and for me, if I pick up one or two or three things yeah. at a workshop, I feel like that's gold. But it's not only the shooting; it's the processing. You know, I think I know something about Photoshop and Lightroom, and I'm standing over someone's shoulder, and they're doing so. I, I didn't know about that, right? Oh, so yeah. it's really a great, great way to learn and share. It's also great. Uh, one of the things that we add to, like when I'm teaching a workshop now, I, I've realized this after teaching many workshops that, for example, we did a hockey workshop a couple years ago, right? We did two hockey workshops. When and we we were able to not only get all the students to go shoot a real NHL hockey game, mm -hmm. but we also got to shoot their their practice. So they have a practice in the day before the game. We got everybody to shoot the practice. When the practice is over, they don't want to really learn from you. They want to work on their images. So they're like, shut up and tell us later. We just shot hockey. We want to work. So in every workshop I do now. I put in just time for you to work. And I just walk around the room. And if somebody gets stuck, yeah. they raise a hand. So you know what I did? I added that to Photoshop world. So now we have these hands-on labs. And this is what we tell people. You bring your own laptop. Now, I'm, I'm running one on retouching. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, bring your own retouching images. I'm not giving you images. Bring the images that you work on. And yes, all you're going to do for an hour is just work on them. And I'm going to be there. I'm going to walk around the room. I play music. Da, 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 Live? Da, da, da. No, it's no, no. da, 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 da. Mostly the girl from Ipanema looping endlessly. <laughs> anyway, I walk around, talk, and, 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 and if you have a question like, how do you do the eyes, or I always have a problem with this, I sit down with you one on one and I show you how to do it. Then I go off and you work on that technique. And then I come back around a little later. How's the eyes looking? Whoops, you went too far with the whiteness. And then it's so, Rick, it is so much fun. But that's, that's one of those things where you just need, you need time and you need the ability to, like you said, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you look over somebody's shoulder and you go, that's pretty cool. How did you do that? Hey, speaking of cool, I have great news. Ladies B &H, and gentlemen. B&H doesn't carry my, uh, my tote, but Adorama does have it. So there we go. Also, I see John Mowry is uh, uh, posting a lot of stuff. He says uh, that I helped him out of a bad situation at, uh, at Fossil Rim where I do a workshop. Have you been to Fossil Rim? No. This is a great place in, uh, in Glen Rose, Texas. It's about an hour and a half south of Fort Worth. They have zebras running around. They have giraffes running around. Really? So it t yeah, it, and you sleep in a tent. They have cheetahs. Uh, they have rhinos. I've been there like six times. I'm going again. Even though I've been to Africa so many times, I still love going there. And I love teaching the workshops. So if you want to do something for under 1000 bucks, if you can't go to Africa, which is going to cost way more than that, go to Fossil Rim Wildlife Center, Glen Rose, Texas. It's like being in Africa, as John knows. What if you go to Bush Gardens in Tampa? Oh, you could do that, too. You know, they take photographers out on a photo I know. tour. Yeah, yeah, that's what this but is. But they like. don't take you out at dawn. They don't take you out at dawn. They do at Fossil Rim. We have special. But you know what happens? Like the giraffes come, and then the monorail goes by, and it yeah, kills it the shot. Not that, yeah, All right. Yeah. Um, Fran asked Rick, where is your favorite place in the world to shoot? It's always the next place. Uh, Susan and I, uh, we're working with uh, Abercrombie and Kent now. We're going to, Ant <clears throat> we're going to Antarctica. <clears throat> we're going to Antarctica. How nice for you. We're going to Antarctica. And I'm teaching you know, digital SLR photography, and Susan's teaching iPhone photography. So it's going to be uh, kind of cool. But I think, Very seriously, nice. I think the, the favorite place is the next place. You look forward to it. It's a challenge. If you uh, had to go back to any one place, we're going to, re, we're going to reframe Fran's question. Okay. Rick, if you had to go back to any one place that you've already shot, yeah. where would you go? I, City Fish. 
City Fish, you don't shoot at. <laughs> I did a shoot at City Fish, dude. I did a one. I did a shoot yeah. for a winery. Yeah. And I and City Fish yeah. let me yeah. use yeah. their because their location yeah. is, is awesome. I think the Maasai Mara. And really? it's a magical place. Botswana is great. South Africa is great. But the Maasai Mara is just so spectacular. You wake up, you, you're looking out during the migration. You're looking out at five, six thousand animals at one time. So the the sight is amazing, but the sound when they start to run, it's uh, and you know then you you witness the circle of life seriously. You know, and, you know, everyone has to eat. Do over you see there. Elton John? Is he there? I, I did. Uh, no, but I did listen to the Lion King. <laughs> there you go. You have to. You know. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, Oh, Chandra, what is she Kathy, saying? Kathy, don't, never don't laugh at this stuff. It just, it just encourages us. All right. Uh, oh, there's lots of comments and stuff here. Um, what did I want to say? Wait, All right. Alan Hess said something really good. Uh, actually, he says well, he was the editor of uh, some of my books, technical editor. But he says, education lasts longer than gear. And I think that's really a good thing. You know, I go to these, uh, you know, I give a lot of seminars, right? And I'm there and some camera company and some uh, stores are there. And people are, you know, they're so into buying like all, this, all these gadgets and everything that they think are going to make them a better photographer rather than buying, you know, like an online class oh, or yeah. a book or something like that. So hey, I, uh, I, that's a good thing from Alan. MJB Photo says, I have a student ID, so can I get a ticket for less than 200 I'm not exactly sure what the student price is. I know it's stupid cheap. So it's around 200 Ish, I think if you're a, a, a real student, not a fake student, and we check it, you know, we check it, we call your teachers and we ask them personally, when was the last time they were in class? <laughs> Do they sleep in class? Do they take calls in class? Do you notice them text, texting? All right. So uh, look at that. Somebody got, a, got an email notification about Larry's class going live, right? Love Larry. And actually, I think it's going to go live tonight. But I mean, technically, we call it Thursday because we announced it Thursday. But I wish I had seen that before my home class. <laughs> no, his is different. Yeah. This isn't home studio. This it's is just, just gear. All kinds of do-it-yourself stuff, but it's like do-it-yourself. Yeah, I mean, it's good. like he like takes a coconut and some string and makes like a, a you know like a beauty dish. I mean, he does amazing, crazy. He puts crazy, the lime in the coconut he, and, and drinks it all up. All right, hey, uh, we are going to take a short break. When we come back, we still have Rick's book to give away. We only have a few minutes left, uh, and we're going to talk about a couple other things that we can do under a thousand dollars. To move our photography forward, stick around. We'll be right back here live on The Grid. Don't go away. Rick Salmon. Hey, everybody. Scott Kelby here. I want to invite you to watch my brand new class on the Nick Collection plugins. So get this. Google made these free, right? Google bought Nick software a few years ago. They made these amazing set of plugins, seven plugins. They made them free. How can they afford to do that? It's because they're Google. They got money just everywhere. So they said, let's make these free for photographers. And what I want to do in this class is I want to teach you what they do, how to use them. I don't want to just demo them because you can go watch demos online. I want to teach you exactly how I use them in my own workflow because these plugins, they're so much better than you think. They're amazing. I know so many photographers where these plugins are their post-processing secret weapon. I'm going to show you which ones I use, which ones I don't, exactly how to use them. It's an awesome set of plugins. Come and watch my class exclusively on Kelby One. You want to take your design skills to the next level. You want to learn how to build a winning portfolio. You want hands-on training with live models. You want to mingle with the top professionals of photography and design. You want three days of Las Vegas energy and excitement. That's why you're going to Photoshop World in Vegas. Squarespace.com. Hey, everybody. We are back. Scott Kelby here with our very special guest. Very excited to have Rick Salmon here, who this has probably got to be your fifth time on the show. Maybe. 13 classes he's got online at Kelby One. If you're not a Kelby One member and you want to watch Rick's classes, seriously, go take the 10-day free trial. 
It's free. Sign up, watch any class you want for 10 days. So there you go. It's free. Free. Of course, we're hoping what's going to happen is <laughs> you go and you love it. And you go, I want to stay after my 10 days. Well, how many classes do you have, if you had to guess? 600 and something. Wow. Full-length classes, like 11,000 lessons, something around 11,000 lessons, over 600 full-length classes. So you have 13 of those 600. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a lot of classes, man. Yeah. All right. So uh, uh, Jeannie in Lakeland says, ah, so Larry's the MacGyver of photography. Oh, I like that he one. He absolutely is. I like to think of him instead of the MacGyver. I like to think of him. Remember on Gilligan's Island, the professor oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. used to take like nothing and make it into stuff. Now, Larry doesn't, but Larry doesn't just do DIY. Sometimes yeah. he just he has cheap ways to do stuff right. and all. He used to do a thing on on D Town TV years ago called cheap. cheap Shots, and he was he was really really good at it. Oh, my daughter just came on the oh, set. Man. Ooh, hi, sweetie. So my ten year old <laughs> my ten year old daughter just snuck onto the set. I remember over here. when my oh, son was. And 10. there's my wifey. Now we have three people in the studio audience. All right. Hey, I just want to let you know, uh, we are giving away Rick's book today. So I want to tell you where to go so you can have a chance to win it. We have one copy, but it is signed by Rick, which makes it worth less than the cover price. <laughs> Actually, it's going to be worth more when I'm dead. Okay, because... right. Yeah, and it could happen during the show. Kelby1.com <laughs> slash webcast dash contest. So that is the, uh, just uh, make sure you say they're watching the grid. And just give us your name and stuff. You don't really have to leave us a comment. We're only giving away one thing. And then hit, <laughs> hit send. Send is important. Just writing your name in there by itself and not hitting send doesn't really enter you in. All right. So a couple important things before we go. I want to give you a couple more tips. But uh, make sure you go to scottkelby.com and check out my guest blogger today, uh, our guest blogger, Peter Treadway. And he's got a really good post that I think ties into everything that we've mm -hmm. been talking about today. He's a very good photographer and a, a buddy of mine as well. Uh, he's based over in the U.K. How do we have so many U.K. viewers, right? I love the yeah, U.K. me too. We are They're all in. Um, well, they had a big photo show there that you speak at, right? I did. I spoke yeah, at the yeah, photography yeah. show yeah, there. Yeah. It was awesome. Plus, they also have some of the best photography magazines. Yeah, yeah, gl I, glossy, I, really nice. Oh, yeah, and Digital Camera World is my favorite. Not only is their magazine awesome, their website is yeah, really yeah. awesome. All right, so that's what you're going to give away Rick's thing. All right, oh, there it is. Here's, here's my uh, blog for today. That's uh, Peter right there. And uh, you can see he looks very much like Prince Charles. And this is like when he was just getting started, and he, he makes some comments about that, and then... He goes into different, different stuff and different lighting and behind the scenes. But he's really talking about not spending a lot of money. He's really just, you know. Hey, Good. also, while you're at my, my blog, I've been doing a bunch of little videos. I've been doing a bunch of, like, little Photoshop-y videos. So if you like Photoshop, which, you know, a lot of us do around here, uh, get back to that. All right. Johan asked, return question to Scott. Don't know if he's answered this already. But if you had $1,000, oh, how oh. would you spend it? I would absolutely spend it on traveling to some place or or doing a fashion shoot and investing in that where you need to like rent a dress get a hairstylist get makeup in a location because really i think when you do when you do that you're investing now you're not going to spend a thousand dollars unless you are creating something for your portfolio right i'm not going to spend a thousand dollars to practice but if you're going to invest in something i think that's something worth investing in when you're investing in yourself and you're investing in making a like let's say there's a particular image you always wanted to make or a particular place you always wanted to shoot like i i i years ago i made the hike out to the wave oh yeah 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 that's not an easy hike. No, some people died there uh, two years ago. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm surprised I didn't die on the way back. <laughs> it was it was just very harrowing. But you I got was, a great shot. I, I'm not sure it was worth it. I'm, I'm telling you, if I didn't, <laughs> I had two buddies with me. If they weren't with me, one of them went and got me water. I'd think I'd still be there. I'd be just like that skeleton. You come by, oh, that's a skeleton. skeleton. Anyway, here's something else I would get. You got to get a flash. If you're not using a flash... And you say, and you say it arrogantly, I'm a natural light photographer. Yeah, right. I'm sorry, I only shoot natural light. Only natural light is good enough for me. Don't say that. If you shoot a natural light photographer, here's what you are. Part-time photographer. You shoot if the light's good, if it's daytime and all. You just need one flash. I'm going to give you the range. You can start off with a Yong Nuo flash. If you're brand new to flash, you're like, I don't know. I'm kind of scared of flash. It's terrifying. Do this. Get a Yong Nuo flash for 70 bucks. 
You're gonna need something to trigger it. You're gonna need the wireless trigger. The trigger's 45. Then go to FJ Westcott. I sound like a broken record today with Westcott, but go to FJ Westcott, get a $99 parabolic shoot through umbrella. Okay, this sounds like I'm setting this up. I swear I did not, but I have a class on this. <laughs> I just, as I'm saying it, I have a class on Kelby One about, uh, I forget what it's called, location light. L I T E, mm -hmm. and it's about using that ninety-nine dollar reflector. That thing is seven foot. It is a seven foot parabolic shoot-through umbrella. I use a Young Neo flash and a trigger. Now we also bought some other inexpensive things. We bought a background from Etsy. Let's mm -hmm. say that right, Etsy. That's right, Etsy, and some other little tricks. So I think we spent two hundred and sixty-six dollars for the. And I'm going to show you one of the pictures we made. So. Hold on. Rick, say something. Okay. Uh, if you're a landscape <laughs> photographer and a seascape photographer, I would say for under 1000 bucks, rather than getting a variable ND filter, right, which yes. lets you blur the water, right, and streak the clouds, I would say get a set. Get a set of ND filters, maybe a two-stop, four, an eight, or a ten-stop, because... With that variable ND filter, there's a tendency to like make it too dark. And when you do that, if the sun's at a, at a very strong angle, you get a very strange band through your photograph. So rather than the variable, get a set. Get a set of ND, three, of ND filters. Now, hey, that looks pretty right. nice. Thank you. Okay. So here's one of the shots. So this was taken from, this is during that class. So you see a setup to do this shot in the class. And then here's another one in the class using, and see the background? Like in the floor, it looks like we shot it on a wood floor. The whole thing. That's a $99 background from Etsy. And then see the little wood in the back? Yeah. That's actually just a piece of real wood spray painted. It's just a, a little piece of wood from Home Depot. And, we, and you, you clamp it with two yeah, little yeah. clamps, like A clamps from, from Home Depot. So the, this was shot like, so we even rented the dress. It's very, very inexpensive. I think it was 266 bucks, might have been just under 300. So, but I think that's something that you can do is, is, to, is to have a, 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 an inexpensive investment in, in your future. In, in like, in making, because I think a lot of people say, if I could just blank, I could get that kind of shot. If I could just get to Cuba, if I could just get right. to uh, Arizona, if I could get to, but instead they go buy some more gear. Uh oh. So I just heard the contest page is having errors. Uh oh. <laughs> All right. We've already got our IT and web department on it. Sorry about that. But um, we're in the middle of moving servers. So. Okay. But our new server dude is fast. Cool. This shot looks great. If we could go back to the shot on your screen, I think you know getting a flash is a great uh, suggestion. This doesn't look like a harsh flash picture. It looks like a, a natural light picture. That's the seven foot parabolic. Right. So the idea is, I think, when you're using a flash, try to make it, you know, balance the light from the flash or whatever. Try to make it not look like a flash picture. You know, Frank Dorhoff has that, that expression. When you think you need uh, two lights, use one, one light. light. When you think you, you need, need three, three lights, lights, use one, one light. light. So I was saying, and uh, this at uh, Photoshop World or someplace, and Jack Resnicki was there, and I said, Jack, is it, you try to make it, you know, look like a not not a flash picture. I said, he said, well, sometimes you know, I might use 11 flashes, but I want it to look like one light. I want it to look like natural light. So that's the idea. Try to balance the light from the flash to the available light. I have a lot of, actually, if someone does a search, Rick Salmon, Daylight Fill and Flash, I have a lot of uh, free lessons on that. So what's interesting is there's no available light here. It's, <laughs> right. That, that is all light but from it the looks, flash. But it looks like a beautiful uh, natural light. Yeah, and I, I tried to, you know, one yeah. of the things, one of the secrets to doing that, of course, is using a very large soft box. Yeah. Because it makes the light soft. The other one is turn the freaking flash down. You don't yeah, need yeah, the right, power at three quarters. Don't, don't, you know, or, mm -hmm. or use an F stop that's going to really clamp down on that. All right. Hey, uh, John Mary has a nice comment. Yeah, I think yeah. we're going to wrap up with this. Uh, John says, another reason for going to a workshop yes. is the lifelong friends you make. He's absolutely right. I have students yeah. that were, that were, that were in my uh, Santa Fe workshops, because I've done a couple of different Santa Fe workshops that I'm still friends with to this day that I've gone on vacation with and hang out with and. So it's, it's, it's absolutely true. When you do a workshop like that, especially those immersive ones, you really do make friends and people that you know over the years. I think Rick's going to show one last If picture. I could just show one picture. Rick, uh, show This picture. is from, uh, from the class that we shot yesterday. Are you in, on video in, control in, in, room one, Rick? Oh, Let's no, just no, going no. to add. Oh, no, not again. I'm on video control room one right there. Refresh. Refresh. How do I do that? 
Uh, I don't think we can. Actually, so I guess people are going to have to like uh, see the Juan. You want to come in here because it's a kind kind of a cool shot. No, Juan hates being on camera. Try to what? Try to. Try, Try two. two. Here two. Control room two. Let's see what happens. Now I'm on two. Perfect. So there we go. So we shot this in Jen's house yesterday. We used a, just a black piece of acrylic, and it's an HDR shot. Handheld HD, really? handheld HDR because the reflection was too dark. So this is the type of picture. Look at that beautiful model we had, Kara. This is the type of picture that you can get in your house just using. Uh, we use the Westcott. Talk about the broken record. We use a uh, Westcott ice light in front and be behind it. You see a little light coming in from behind. So it's a handheld HDR shot with a 5D Mark III at ISO. Uh, because it wasn't a lot of light, I think it was at about ISO 3200. Uh -huh. Hey, Jeannie in Lakeland asks, I have a 580, so it's a Canon, 580EX. Will that work with the parabolic? Yeah, Jeannie, it, 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 any flash. By the way, I was, I was going to ramp you up to the 580EX. So the 580EX is an awesome flash. The 600EX is even more awesome because it's got radio triggers. But yeah. also, Canon just came out with another one, like a 4... 430, 480, I'm not sure. it's, it's a, a, a less expensive flash that has radio triggers. And then in between there are Fotix. So if you see me out on my tour, I'm using the new Fotix flashes. Yeah. I don't know if you've used the Fotix. Yeah, I have. The, the, but there's a brand they new the trigger. They have flash and the trigger, yeah. Dude, they're, they just came out with a new trigger. So Fotix came out with a trigger, and it's the one I use on my tour. And this is why it beats any trigger I've ever used. It has five groups, A, B, C, D, and E, mm -hmm. right? Ready yep. for this? They're hard buttons. Really? Right. You don't have to That's dig cool. through. That's cool. It sounds stupid. It sounds really stupid. But here's the thing. If you just go, I want to go on group D on any flash system I've ever used, you got to go through menus. Yeah. You got to go mode, down, 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 D on theirs, D. Well, it's just like on the camera. Some of the controls now, like the plus and minus control here, it's like back right up there. on the top of the Instead camera. Instead of having to right? dig through, I mean, the I button love it. and then dial I love it. it. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, anyway, Rick, thank you so much. Where can people go learn more about you? Uh, RickSalmon.com? I, I was going to say Kelby One, but RickSalmon.com, uh, everything's there. Now, you're on Instagram? I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, on Instagram, you're Rick Salmon? I'm, Rick, I'm, I'm always Rick Salmon. He's always. He's <laughs> never anyone yeah. else. Yeah, this is my homepage right now. All well, these are my uh, killer classes here on the Kelby One. This is one of my favorite, actually. It's how to get motivated and stay inspired, like we were talking about before, uh, that we need motivation. I know I still need motivation. That's why I go to some of these places and meet like lifelong friends like John was saying. There you go. Well, guys, we invite you to watch Rick's classes over at Kelby One again. And you are one of the most watched instructors in all of Kelby One. Go check out his class. Take the 10-day free trial. Go to kelbyone.com. You can watch them immediately right now. Like when this show ends and it goes to black, you could go, I'm going to go watch every freaking class I want for 10 days. <laughs> Awkward pause. And we're back. Thanks to having Rick on the show. Great Thank having you, man. As always. And we will see you guys next week. No, I'm in Portland, Oregon next week in Seattle. Seattle and Portland. Two places. I'll be in both with my tour. If you're in either Seattle or Portland or you know somebody in Seattle or Portland, say, hey, Scott's going to be there teaching a seminar next week. Maybe you should go check him out. KelbyOneLive.com. In the meantime, thanks to our sponsor, Squarespace. They make portfolios for you. Great. And my site is Squarespace. My site is Squarespace. Everyone's site is Squarespace. It's like inexpensive. You can get them for what, eight bucks a month? Uh, I'm not sure. It's because Rick has the very <laughs> expensive one. I'm not sure. Rick is so loose with money, he could be paying 500 bucks a month. He doesn't know. Anyway, <laughs> thanks to Jen and our crew here. Thanks yes. to Magic Wand. You're about to see Wand's work in just in three, two, one. Wand. There he goes. See you next week, everybody. <laughs>